I think growing up, I always thought Good Friday was a little weird. It feels like a weird thing to start off a message on Good Friday with. Um, somebody went, uh, made a comment to me. They said, Good Friday is like the day we pretend Easter didn't happen. <laughs> we just put on a sad face and we pretend that there was no resurrection. Um, and, and as Christians, we believe that the only reason that Jesus matters, it all is centered on the fact that he rose. Paul says so himself. It says, if Jesus didn't rise from the dead, then all of this is for nothing. And for those of us who, who profess Jesus, who, who say that you can have life in him, we are of all people most to be pitied. And so the question is, why do we celebrate Good Friday? <laughs> if our hope, if our life is based on the resurrection, why does this night matter? Why do we take time to put on the sad face and look at the cross and remember? Now, I think that part of the reason is that because as people, as humans, we are very bad at dealing with and looking at and sitting with the consequences of our actions. I, I can't tell you how many times I apologize to somebody and the, the answer I want to hear is like, oh, no, it really didn't make a difference, right? It's fine. I don't want people to say, you know what, actually that was really hard. <laughs> I, I, I can acknowledge sometimes like, yeah, I, I screwed up, I messed up, but I, I, in the back of my head I'm hoping it really didn't matter, right? It was a minor thing, right? And so sometimes we need to be forced to reconcile with, forced to look at those things that we've done and, and the actual costs and the consequences of it. Um, when I was growing up, my first dog I remember was a little pug named Maggie. It's this little black pug, cutest little face. Now, Maggie had a really bad habit of not going to the bathroom outside. And so I remember um, one day when Maggie decided to go number two um, in a bedroom and then, you know, goes about its day. She's just running around the house fine. And so we end up finding this. And I remember my dad dragging this, <laughs> this dog and shoving its face like inches from this and saying, you did this. <laughs> you made this happen, Right? He wanted to the, the connect the dots. This issue was caused by you. And as people, we, we so often, we just kind of want to move on, right? It's really easy to say, hey, I screwed up, my bad, um, I sinned, or, or whatever. But then we kind of want to move on. We don't want to actually look at how this hurt people, how this affected people, what had to be done about it. Sometimes we want to look for quick remedies. We want to just try to move past um, and especially if we can make it up to somebody. Um, I remember my, my brothers and I, we'd always, you know, horse around and stuff. And I remember one time my brother Nick and I, we were playing. And I accidentally, I forgot what we were fighting over, but I accidentally hit him. And he started crying. And immediately I realized, oh, no, he's going to tell my parents. And so I told him, no, you can hit me back. Here, hit me. And then we're fair. And then we don't have to tell anybody. Like, just get it over with. Then we'll be, we'll be even. And so we're really good at, at just moving past, Right? And so I think part of the reason that we spend time on Good Friday reflecting is to realize that that new life, that, that hope that we have in Jesus, that it came at a cost. That while we can celebrate the joys of the resurrection, we can celebrate the joy of new life, we can celebrate the promises that death no longer claims us, it's important that we don't take for granted what had to happen to get us here. And we read that, that account in, in the Gospel of John, and you think about Jesus who comes to this earth and he comes to show people love. His whole mission, he, he comes and he, he's going around and he's proclaiming good news and he's welcoming people who are far off, people who had no hope. And he's healing people who were, who were crippled, people who were blind, people who had all sorts of issues. And he's, he's doing all of these things and, and he rides into Jerusalem and people are, are hoping that this is the guy and it's that Jesus you jump forward and then we read about. The same Jesus who, who rode into Jerusalem with praises of Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, the same one who, who gets on trial and is mocked, ridiculed. He saved others, why can't he save himself? And, and they, they pierced his head with thorns, just every bit of humiliation, every bit of pain was put upon this man who came only to bring love and hope and perfection. 
So when we look at the cross, when we reflect on Good Friday about what this is, it's a call not only to look at Jesus, but also to look at us. Because like I said earlier, it's easy to just take the story as one that just happened in the past. And a good story, right? Great, Jesus died. It was a good thing for us. Awesome. But to forget about that it was for us that he had to die for. I found this uh, painting. This was, well, it's actually a picture drawing. This is from a guy named Frank Koshy in 1974 called Crucifixion. This was donated to the Smithsonian of, of American Art Museum. Here it is. It's very abstract. It's with pen, felt, charcoal. You can see there a bloody Jesus. His face is marred. It looks kind of skull-like. You can see his rib cage. He's strung out, and you can see blood around his chest, around his hands and his feet. But what struck me about this picture is this might be one of the only pictures of the crucifixion that I've seen where not only do you see Jesus on a cross, but you see Jesus with the people he died for. You can't see Jesus on that cross without looking at the crowd. At the bottom, you have the Pharisees, those religious leaders who hated him, despised him. You have the mobs, the crowds, like I said, who, who at one point when Jesus rides in, there's crowds yelling his praises, hooray, and then on Good Friday yelled, crucify him, crucify him. And it's this Jesus who ultimately went to that cross, who ultimately sacrificed himself for those people and for us. And it's sometimes really uncomfortable when we are completely honest with how sinful we are. Like I said, it's so easy to move past. Uh, many of you might have seen a few years ago, there was the big case of Larry Nassar. He was the U.S. and Michigan State gymnastics trainer who did some unspeakable things to gymnasts. What I found fascinating amongst all of the tragedy is that um, at the end of his trial, before he was ultimately put in jail, all of the victims had a chance to speak and to share the damage and the hurt that he had caused them. And he asked the judge if he could step out of the room and leave. And you think about it, this man had already done all of these things, and yet he couldn't bear to hear back to himself how bad it was. I want nothing more than just to move past. I don't want to hear how sinful and broken I am. And, and we had that confession earlier. You think about, if we're really honest... How often we have failed to love God. How often we have just chased our own passions. How often we've seen people in need around us and chosen, you know what, this is more comfortable for me, so I'm just going to stay in my box. The reality is that we are all far more sinful than we could ever really comprehend. And if we weren't, then it wouldn't have taken that. And there's something extremely difficult about having somebody else pay for what you've done wrong. If you were ever on a sports team, and if somebody messed up, they made the whole team run laps, right? You hated it because, again, you, can I reconcile? Can I make it right? And the reality is that as human beings, we are so far from God. We, we have sinned so much to our core and our fallen human nature. Without Jesus, we would choose our own sins, our own passions every single time. That there is no possible way that we could make it right on our own. And so Jesus, the Holy Son of God, had to come in human flesh and he had to give it all. And so we look at this, not brushing past the consequences, that it, this perfect, blessed man who came only pronouncing forgiveness, only pronouncing love, only pronouncing hope and a future, this is the Jesus that for us had to die. And every one of those sins, everything that we had ever done wrong and everything that we will do wrong, led him to that cross. But we rejoice that in doing so, because he was obedient, because he was perfect where we weren't, because he was just where we were unjust, because he was loving where we were unloving, our sins stayed there with him. And they were buried in his tomb and left for good. Because when he rose, they didn't come with him. They stayed buried in the ground. And so as we reflect on this night, as we look forward to Easter again, because that's ultimately where our hope is, I just wanted to share 
this quote from uh, an early church father. His name was um, St. Athanasius. He was in Alexandria. He was a very early Christian. He, he really was a champion of the Christian faith throughout still our language, our understanding today. And at one point he was reflecting on Good Friday and he said, if any Christian should be asked, why did Jesus have to die on a cross for us? He said, the answer is this. And he goes on to say, there's only one way which somebody is executed where their arms are outstretched, welcoming all in. Brothers and sisters, when we look at that cross, we see the Son of God, holy and perfect. Even in his final moments, he's still caring for his mother, making sure she's looked after. Behold your son. Behold your mother. But he did that to fulfill the scripture and to ultimately bring reconciliation between God and you and me. That we might be made perfect in God's eyes because our sin, our shortcomings, all of our messes and our problems were left there. And what we are left with is open arms embracing us and welcoming us in to grant us forgiveness and a blessed hope and a blessed future. As we look forward to Easter, may we look with honest eyes the cost that it took. It didn't come free. They say there's no such thing as a free lunch. There's no such thing as a free salvation. It cost Jesus, but he did it for you, and now you belong to him. We look forward to Easter when we celebrate his triumph and his victory. But may this be the meditation for our hearts tonight, tomorrow, until that glorious day. In Jesus' name, amen.